What's happening guys? Welcome back to Table Talk. I'm Andrew and today we are talking about the best kind of games. The games that can work in any family's collection. The games that work with almost anyone and are simple and easy enough to teach to anyone but still interesting, strategic, and fun. These are some of my favorite games because I love introducing my friends and family that may not necessarily be that into board games and to show them that board games are really great. So, we'll get into it starting with my number 10. My number 10 is The Crew. If you're a Midwesterner, you probably have played Euchre, which is what is called a trick-taking game. Any game where you're laying down a suit and everyone else has to follow suit. But what's difficult about Euchre is it pretty much comes down to the kind of cards you get and it's the same thing every time. What mixes that up is the crew, which puts you in space and instead of working against each other, you are all collectively working as a team to accomplish missions. The cool thing is each and every single game you play will be a different mission and puzzle for you to solve. One game you might not be trying to win any tricks, maybe one you're only trying to win two specific ones with certain numbers, or one you can't even communicate. It's really cool and really fun because it's a different experience every time and you can get better and better and learn how to gel with your group more and more. That is my number 10 game to start a collection with, The Crew. My number nine game is a classic modern game called Pandemic. Now, a lot of people have never played a cooperative board game. Most board games, everyone's fighting against each other. But in a game like Pandemic, you're all cooperating together, in this case, to stop a worldwide pandemic, which admittedly <laughs> has become a little more real since COVID-19, but it is still a great game to play. And the reason that is is because you are each a different role with a different power and you are running around the entire world trying to solve the problem. And you can do that through a variety of actions, which is cool because there are different actions to take, but they're all simple enough that they can be learned relatively easily. It's a really, really fun game, a fun system with tons of expansions, tons of spin-offs, shorter versions, dice versions of the game, legacy versions of the game, which if you want to play a board game that constantly changes based on how your group does, Pandemic Legacy. But if you're anybody else, just grab a copy, Pandemic, my number nine. My number eight is a little out of left field, but a great game nonetheless, and that is a game called Dice Forge. Now in this game, you are a group of demigods apparently trying to win a tournament. It has cool artwork, but it doesn't really matter. Pretty much the goal of this game is you have dice that you're rolling every round and getting stuff for them. But the cool thing is you then use those resources to buy better sides of your dice. That's right, throughout the game, you're disassembling your dice and making it better and better. So by the end of the game, you are rolling these overpowered dice and getting tons of stuff from them. It is a blast to play because depending on who you're playing with, you know, certain dice may be available and other times they might not be. Different strategies of depending which quests are still available. It is a ton, a ton of fun to build up your dice in a game called Dice Forge, my number eight. My number seven is taking the idea of spending over $100 with a group of four people to run around a room and solve puzzles and instead consolidating that to $10 in a single box. That is the unlock or exit games. Now there are a bunch of these games and they are simply escape rooms in a box. And what's awesome about these games are they're way more of an affordable experience but still a meaningful, memorable experience nonetheless with other people. You're trying to solve puzzles, get through whatever you're getting through, getting clues along the way and trying to get the best score possible. Now, I would recommend the Murder on the Disorient Express for the exit game. For unlock, I would recommend the Secret Agent puzzle. But really, any of them are good. You can look up an online ranking, but they're all great. And if you're like, well, why are there two, unlock or exit? I like unlock more because they are replayable. So once you're done playing through them, you can give them to someone else. And they use an app with cards, so you can do a lot with the app. The negative, though, is what makes Exit so great. Exit actually uses real physical objects that you're tearing, cutting, folding, 
and it makes a lot more tangible of an experience. The negative is they're ultimately limited to what's in the box, they don't use an app, and they're not replayable, so once you play them, you gotta get rid of them. Which looks a little weird when you're at a board game cafe and you throw a board game in the trash, but they are not trash games. They are great ones and great to have in any collection. The Unlock and Exit Games, my number seven. My number six is a game that is really the ending of any heist or gangster movie or that one episode of The Office when everyone has their guns drawn on each other. It is a game called Cash and Guns, specifically the second edition. In Cash and Guns, you have a gigantic pile of loot and you're dividing it amongst each other as gang members. The fun part is each round you are gonna simultaneously select a target and aim with a actual physical gun. So really to get anyone to play this game, just throw out a pile of foam guns and everyone, everyone wanna play. And what's fun about it is then it becomes a bluffing game if their gun is loaded. Odds are it isn't, but is that worth the risk of you dying and once again missing out on the loot? Because whoever has survived and left staying at the end gets to divide the cash, the diamonds, and the paintings. It's a lot of fun. Very interactive game, very easy, cash and guns. My number six. My number five is a racing game and everyone loves racing. It has incredible artwork and production and really cool expansion maps, but it's very, very easy. And that is a game called Downforce. Downforce is from one of my favorite publishers, Restoration Games, which takes old games and gives them great artwork and production, restores them, and that is Downforce. Because in this game, you are auctioning off cars that you will then race. But the interesting part is throughout the game, you're not only trying to have your car finish first, but actually bet on the winning cards. The other fun thing is everyone has a unique power, and when you play cars, cards to have cars race, you're not just moving your car, but everyone else's as well. So you're strategically positioning other people's cars to block and get in the way and get your car to the finish and bet correct winner that is my number five game downforce my number four game is for anyone that likes puzzly abstract strategy pattern tile recognition I don't but if I were to play one it would be my number four Azul Azul is massively popular because it's these really cool artistic tiles and you're putting them in patterns a la like a candy crush game so throughout the game you're selecting uh, groups of tiles and then trying to put them the best way you can in your specific pattern. What's cool about this game is there's tons of spin-offs and expansions you can get, and anyone's gonna play it with all those cool tiles, and it's a lot of fun. Very simple, but very beautiful game. That is my number four, Azul. My number three is what's called a deck building game, which if you're not familiar throughout the game, you start with a really crappy deck, and by the end, your deck is super overpowered. So you get to do these awesome combinations and have really, really powerful cards. And this one is set all in the Harry Potter universe. That is Hogwarts Battle. And what's awesome about Hogwarts Battle is right in the box, you get all of these secret tuck boxes that as you play games, you unlock new cards and villains to face. And you actually play through the years of the Harry Potter books and movies. So as it goes on, you'll recognize more and more uh, remembered uh, characters and events and villains and it's a lot, a lot of fun. You, there's also great expansions for this, and as the game goes on, it gets more and more complex. So you can begin playing this with someone that's maybe never played a modern board game, and by the end, they're gonna be able to pick up all these complex kind of mechanics and strategies as the game gets more and more difficult and more and more complex. A great game in the Harry Potter universe. That is Hogwarts Battle, my number three. My number two takes those classic monster video games and brings them to life. King Kong and Godzilla battling over the city of Tokyo. That is King of Tokyo. A great game that takes the idea of Yahtzee rolling five dice and then re-rolling twice to get specific combinations and tosses it in with a giant monster battle. Because you are going to be using the results of those dice to attack power up and heal your monster and beat the other monsters. It is a lot of fun because it looks really cool. It's dice rolling. It's not very difficult. It's a theme anyone would want to get into. 
and there's also a lot of great expansions and even a power-up expansion that makes it more strategic by giving each of the monsters unique abilities. If you ever want to see King Kong and Godzilla go after it, get King of Tokyo at number two. Before I reveal my number one, I want to thank you guys all for your comments and your suggestions. I want to take those and make them into future suggestions and top tens based on your guys' picks. I don't want it just to be my voice, but your guys' as well. And obviously, I do not have a Patreon or a sponsorship. I just do this for fun. So if you want to donate to any type of cause, a really good one is Big Brother Big Sister. Link in the description below. Number one game, which before I announce this, once again, pause. I'm going to do a part two to this, and probably a part three, because this is one of my favorite category games. But my number one for this list is maybe the definitive collection starter game of the modern era. That is Ticket to Ride. You've probably seen it at Walmart, Target, or a bookstore, and that is because it is immensely popular and well sold. Because it takes very simple concepts of collecting sets of cards, and then you turn in those cards to complete train routes across the United States of America. Very simple, but can be very strategic and very interactive as you're cutting each other off. So you can just play it whoever can do their best routes, but you can also play cutthroat, constantly be cutting each other off. And there are a bunch of expansion maps, so you can do the US, Europe, the Americas, Africa, Asia, even certain countries like the UK and Japan, even cities like New York, London, and Amsterdam. It is a blast to play. There's a kids version as well, immensely popular for a reason. My number one board game to start a collection with, Ticket to Ride. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I would love if every single one of you commented, subscribed, and kept supporting what I'm doing. I'll catch you guys.